You guys want to get shocked? Something your Bible translations do you a disservice. You guys want to get shocked? You guys get ready to blown away, be blown away because this again shows you how your Bible translations do you a disservice. You'll see what I mean. Who did Eve conceive? Who did Eve conceive? Here's the literal translation of Genesis 4 verse 1. This is the literal translation. And Adam knew Eve his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain, and she said, I've gotten a man, Yahweh. That's the literal translation. She actually thought she had given birth to God in the flesh. And Adam knew Eve his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain. And she said, I have gotten a man, Yahweh. And again, she bore his brother, Abel. Abel was a keeper of flocks, but Cain was a cultivator of the ground. Do you understand this actually confirms the Virgil conception and birth of Jesus as God in the flesh? In other words, if this is the literal Hebrew, that means Adam and Eve realized that a woman would be giving birth to God in the flesh, Emmanuel, and that was Mary. Now, I'm going to tell you what the translators do because, remember, because of skepticism and an unwillingness of allowing the text to say what it says, they added words to change the meaning. Are you listening, guys? We're going to go in depth right now. If this is the correct translation, then that means Adam and Eve realize God was promising that the woman would give birth to God in the flesh and God would become her physical seed to destroy the serpent. The literal translation, this is the literal translation. Now, if you notice, I put in parentheses the particle et, alif, tau, or tav, et, this particle. To show you that this particle is never translated whenever it appears in Genesis 3 and 4, except at this part where it says, I have gotten a man, and then they translate the particle with Yahweh. But whenever that particle appears, they don't render it. They leave it untranslated because et becomes an object marker. It points out the object. I've gotten a man. And who was that man? Yahweh. I include the Hebrew phrase et to show the inconsistency of the translators for rendering this particle as with by in respect to what Eve said after birthing Cain, i.e. that she birthed a man and then they will translate it with by Yahweh. And yet they do not even translate the particle in the rest of its occurrences. Well, let me show you what I mean here. I've gotten a man with the help of. See that? Yahweh. Legacy standard Bible, right? Okay, now let's look. Look, I have gotten a man from, with the help of, okay? With the help of, see? I've gotten and gained a man with the help of. I've gotten a man from. I have had a male child with the Lord's help. I have given life to a man with the Lord's help. I have acquired a man from Adonai with the help of the Lord. And man knew Eve, his wife, she conceived. I have acquired a man with Jehovah through God. Eve said, with the Lord's help, I found a man. With the Lord's help, I've gotten a man with the Lord, with the help of the Lord. I produced the man with the help of the Lord. You see what's happening here? Okay. Now, someone said New American Standard Bible had a note. Okay, let me sh check the note. Okay, this is 1995 edition. Look, I have gotten a man child with the help of the Lord. But now notice if you go to C, I've gotten a man child, the Lord. Guys, you're seeing it, right? You now have Old Testament proof that the first promise of Genesis is a promise that God Almighty would become flesh, physical seed of a woman to destroy the serpent. Eve thought she was the one. She was mistaken. Because then Mary, the Blessed Mother, comes, and she is the woman who can see by the Spirit as a virgin, and she gave birth to physical seed who's Emmanuel, Yahuwah, God with us. You see it? 
but you won't see it in your translations. So what's the justification? Well, let me tell you what the justification is. Here's where they're going to pull a fast one on you. They're going to say, well, the Hebrew has that particle et, right? Or et. All right, but hold on. I'm now going to show you this particle appears all throughout verses 1 to 2 here with your own eyes. And you're going to see in all the other occurrences is not translated. It's not translated. Here, watch. You see, thank God for modern technology. Thank God for modern technology. Here it is. So you can see it with your own eyes. Watch. I'm going to show it to you. Here it is. Here's the word et. You see it right here? It's not translated. And Adam knew et, not translated. Eve, his wife, and she conceived. Now watch here. And bore, there it is again, not translated. Et, Cain, Cain. And I've acquired, now notice, they translated here. You see what they did? Why here they put the word from? But here, untranslated. Here, untranslated. Are you seeing what's happening? Are you seeing with your own eyes? Here, they don't translate it. Here, they don't translate it. Here, they don't translate it. Here, they don't translate it, but here they do. When it says, I've acquired a man. Now, if we follow the pattern, I've acquired a man, Yahweh. Isn't there a warning in Scripture, Deuteronomy 4, 2, Proverbs 30, verse 5 to 6? Don't you dare add or take away from his word? Okay, now watch how many times this preposition appears. Watch, it's never translated elsewhere. Watch, here. Here again. Not translated. See? See? Not translated. Are you seeing it? And I give you the examples in my article. Not translated. Here it is again. Not translated. Genesis 4, 11 to 12. Okay, watch. Look. The only time they translate it is in Genesis 4, 1, where it says, I've acquired a man, Yahweh. Okay, watch. You're seeing the evidence. Here it is again. Is it translated? How about here? Are you catching this? Still not blame here. Look at it again. Enoch, not translated. Look how many occurrences. It's And I give you the examples in my article. Not translated. Look, guys, you're seeing it. Look, I'm not lying. I didn't make this up. Boom, look. Not translated. Genesis 4, all throughout. Not translated. You see it? Again, boom. No translation of the, the particle or the... Object marker. You caught it? You don't translate in all the other occurrences, but here you do. Here, look. Just the first two verses. Adam knew. Boom. No translation. Eve. Now, would they translate in Adam knew with Eve, from Eve? No. Same context, right? And bore Cain. Would you say and bore from Cain or with Cain? Here it is again. But now, voila, look. Now here, I've acquired a man, and now here they say from. Why? They robbed you of a clear reference from the Hebrew Bible that Adam and Eve knew God was promising that the seed of the woman would include God becoming physical flesh, physical seed from a woman, but Eve mistakenly thought she was the one. No, she was a picture of someone greater, the Blessed Mother. So the literal translation, what's the literal translation? Here it is. And Adam knew Eve, his wife. She conceived and bore Cain. And she said, I have gotten a man, Yahweh. I've gotten a man, Yahweh. Literal, that's what it is. And again, she bore his brother Abel. Abel was a keeper of flocks, but Cain was a cultivator of the ground. Now, even the NET admits that this is the translation, but tries to then reject it. Here, NET Bible. Let's get to their note. Hebrew with the Lord. The particle, et, is not the accusative object sign, but the preposition with. Don't believe that. That's an assertion. That's not proof. They're treating it as a preposition. Some take the preposition in a sense with the help of, while others prefer along with, in the sense of like, equally with, in common with. Either works well in this context. The latter is reflecting the present translation. Now watch. Some understand. You see why I say don't follow their spiel, they're admitting there are scholars who say that the word et 
as the accusative object sign and translate, I have acquired a man, the Lord. See, they just admit that to you. Now, notice the acknowledgement. They suggest that the woman thought mistakenly that she had given birth to the incarnate Lord, the Messiah, who would bruise the serpent's head. Now, remember, they're Trinitarians, right? So you'd think they'll go for it. Look at how wicked. Now, with enemy, with friends like these, who needs enemies? Enemies. This fanciful, see, they're even mocking it, fanciful suggestion based on a questionable allegorical interpretation of Genesis 3.15. You see what they said? And they're supposedly Trinitarians, huh? With friends like these, who needs enemies? They're admitting to you there are scholars who take at the, the particle as pointing to the object of the sentence and translate, I have acquired a man, the Lord. They suggest that the woman thought mistakenly that she had given birth to the incarnate Lord, that she gave birth to God in the flesh. The Messiah bruised the serpent's head. But then they poo-poo that translation. Why? This is a strong proof that 1,500 years before the birth of our Lord, God had revealed in the Hebrew Bible, Hebrew Bible, that a woman would give birth to physical seed, and that physical seed would be the God of Israel in the flesh. And lo and behold, the Blessed Mother gives birth to Emmanuel, God with us, in the flesh, her seed, who is God, conceived by the Holy Spirit. All right, now let's continue. Look at the mission of the rabbis and their inconsistency. Watch here. Look at their inconsistency because they see the word et is used. But here, look, they're going to admit we got a problem. Here it is. The following quotations illustrate that there have been Jewish authorities, rabbis, which were aware that there is something unusual about how Eve is said to have acquired Cain. We got a problem. Now, here is where you're going to see their difficulty. And said, I have acquired a man with, here's that, et, and that's in the translation, the Lord. When a woman bears children, she says, I've now acquired my husband, ish. Translator says man can also mean husband, into my possession. Rabbi Ishmael asked Rabbi Kiva, they're troubled by this. Look, you're going to see their trouble. Like what? Why is it written this way? Saying to him, because you study under Nahum of Gamzo for 22 years, who taught, the words ach and rak are restrictive expressions. Et and gam are inclusive expressions. I ask you, what is the meaning of the et that is written here? Now notice their inconsistency. The word et is used throughout the context. And yet here, they're going to focus on et and try to explain it away. But wait, what about the rest of the occurrences? He said, had it been written, Qaniti ish Hashem, I acquired the man Hashem, God. It would have been difficult, omitting et. It would have implied that she acquired the Holy One, blessed be. Did you understand? They just admitted it. They're saying the way it's written, if there was no et, if it said, Qaniti ish Hashem, I acquired the man Hashem, then it means that she gave birth to the Holy One. But that can't mean that because the word et is used. So instead, it's stated with God, et Hashem. You see their dishonesty? You see their lies? They have to make up stuff to undo the plain reading. Because you know what I would told the rabbi? Uh, rabbi, can I ask you a question? Yes. Doesn't the particle et appear before and after? Yes. And isn't it untranslated? Yes. And so at before and after doesn't mean with or by or from. It's not a preposition. It's an object marker. Why then do you now say that at here is a preposition? You see their lies? They have to make up things as they go along because they're embarrassed by the way their Bible is written. This is proof the Bible has been preserved. Because if the Jews are going to corrupt the Old Testament, why then? Did they leave these things intact? Why didn't they change their Old Testament to contradict New Testament? Because as it stands, Old and New Testaments agree perfectly and confirm Trinitarian Christianity and contradict Judaism. All right, now let's continue. He said to him, 
For it is not an empty matter for you, Mikkam. If it is empty, it is because of you, Mikkam, because you do not know how to expound. Rather, at Hashem, previously, Adam was created from earth and Eve was created from Adam. So now they come up with another explanation. At Hashem means that somehow Adam was created from earth and Eve was from Adam. How the hell do they get that from that at Hashem? I don't know. But from now on, Eve said, offspring will come about in our image and our likeness. A man will not produce offspring without woman, nor will a woman without a man, nor both of them without the divine presence. Kaniti, kaniti, ish et Hashem means I've acquired the child through a man and through God. See how they make up stuff as they go along? Now, this one is remarkable. This one is the English translation of the Aramaic paraphrase of the Old Testament. The Targum of Pseudo Jonathan ben Uziel. You click on it, you can read online for free. And Adam knew Chava, his wife, who had desired the angel. She wanted the angel. And she conceived and bare Cain. And she said, I've acquired a man, the angel of the Lord. This is how you know the rabbis are lying. Notice they didn't render, the Jews who read Hebrew, didn't render, I've acquired a man with the help of the angel of the Lord. They translated it literally. But instead of the Lord, they put, she acquired the angel of the Lord. She thought she had given birth to the angel of the Lord. Showing you the Jews understood that the Hebrew literally meant that Eve thought she had given birth to the Lord in the flesh. So they took that as meaning she thought she had given birth to the angel of the Lord in the flesh. You caught it? And she added to bear from her husband, Adam, his twin, even Habil. And we know that the angel of the Lord in the Old Testament becomes Jesus Christ in the New Testament. I've done series on it. Everyone got it? So do you understand the literal translation of Genesis 4.1 isn't I've acquired a man with Yahweh. It's I've acquired the man Yahweh. So she was wrong. It wasn't Yahweh she conceived. But she was right in that the prophecy is announcing that a woman would give birth to a physical seed, a male child. And that child would be God in the flesh. And we know who that woman is. Matthew chapter 1, Luke 1. The blessed Theotokos, our holy mother. So this is the literal translation. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived him bore Cain, and she said, I've gotten a man, Yahweh. Here you have proof that they understood. Brethren, do you understand the implication? They understood that God was promising that God would become flesh, physical seed, a male child from a woman to destroy the serpent. And Eve thought she was it. That's where they were wrong. That's where they were wrong. You got my point? See it? All right. 